What's up Backgammon fans? I'm Mark Olsen from Backgammon Galaxy. In this video we're gonna look at a specific type of positions which we call prime versus prime or a priming battle. So let me show you this position we've got here and just show you what I'm what I'm talking about. So a prime versus prime position is essentially a middle game because both players still have back checkers so none of them None of the players have uh, achieved full freedom yet with the back checkers. But what is characteristic about a prime versus prime position is that both players are aiming for the prime game plan here. You can see here blue has a prime trapping two checkers, white has a prime, also a five prime tra trapping two checkers. So let's talk a little bit about this position type and what, what goes on here. So the first thing that matters in a prime versus prime is the structure. Whoever has the stronger structure has an advantage. So let's look at the structure here. Here, blue has a pure five prime, so does white. So you could say the structure there is actually the same. However, how is the structure doing priming wise? Well, this five prime is blocking these two checkers, but these two checkers have an anger on the edge of the prime, which means they have daylight. They can jump out directly with the six. That's not the case over here. These two checkers don't have daylight. They need first to creep up with a one and then they got daylight, then they can roll a six. So these two checkers are getting primed way better than these two checkers. So that's a big advantage here for blue. Okay, next thing we have to consider in a prime versus prime is the timing. So what is timing? Well, timing is kind of the, you can say timing is kind of the flow of the game and the indicator of how strong your position will be when you reach the crucial moment in the game. So the crucial moment in the game in a prime versus prime is typically when one player crunches his prime on involuntarily. So that would be the crucial uh, moment of the game. That's usually when he loses the game. Whoever crunches his prime first will probably lose the game in a prime versus prime position. So timing, the better timing you have, the longer you can hold your position. The worse timing you have, the less time, the less moves you've got until your position collapses. So let's look at this position here. In this position, blue has way better timing than white because blue can move these two checkers here from the midpoint. That's a good supply of spare checkers. He has a couple of rolls here. He can move them and still hold his his structure while white doesn't have any spare checkers only he's got this one that's the only spare checker he's got so you can see the fact that white is actually ahead in the race in this position is a disadvantage in a prime versus prime position you want to have superior timing and therefore it's usually an advantage to be down in the race not ahead so this is kind of opposite of a usual backgammon position we can also see that these two checkers here buried behind blue's anger is really hurting white's position because they are not performing any useful duty as it is right now because they're behind the anger. White would prefer to have them out here to form a six prime or even up here to have more timing because if they were here white could also move several turns before he had to crunch his five prime but as it is White cannot. White has to give up his prime next time and then blue will have an easy time escaping and keeping white primed. So structure and timing, those are the two key elements to a prime versus prime position. We talked a little bit about the critical moment in the game of backgammon. In some positions, it's for instance in a holding game position, it's when you get that turnaround shot. Either you hit it now or you're going to lose the game. That's the critical moment. In a prime versus prime, it's, typical, it's typically when one position crunches his prime. So in this position here, for instance, it would be the moment white has to let go of his prime, for instance, like this. I mean, it's not all over yet. He still has a four prime, but that was a crucial moment because now he lost a lot of his prime value and blue can easily escape. Now it's not only the sixes, but also the fives that gets him to, to, to jump the prime. And essentially the, the battle is lost here for white. Blue should double and white can't even take. If we were to give white a little bit better timing, something like, let's say he was something like this, this would still be a double because he's priming these checkers very well. But here white has more than enough timing uh, to take this cube. Um, and we can even try to improve blue's position a little bit here. Let's say we 
every pip we move backwards is actually an improvement for blue. For instance, this position is even better for blue, even though we, he just lost three pips. What is this plot here? What nickname could we give this plot? Well, it's a slot because it's slotting like a slot machine the point we want to make. It's the slotting for the six prime. If white rolls a three, oh sorry, a four, he can make a six prime, the strongest structure in backgammon. Yes, so we've got structure. And by the way, what is a strong structure? Well, a strong structure is a pure structure, a structure with no gaps, and it's an efficient structure, a structure that use, utilizes the checkers to the maximum. So for instance, uh, this structure here is very efficient. We've got 11 checkers, so 10 of them form the five prime and one is a useful spare checker. That's efficient. So purity and efficiency is definitely very important as well. Okay guys, that was a little bit about prime versus prime positions. You want to have good timing, so usually you want to be down in the race and you want to have better structure. So that, those are the two key points to understanding the prime versus prime position. Good luck. Backgammongalaxy.com